Hey guys, it is Miss King and it is really good to be back with you guys. Um, we are about to start our, we're starting our second semester and I don't know about you, but I'm really excited and I hope that you guys had a great break. I really do. I really hope that, that you enjoyed your time off and that you're coming back ready and raring to um, learn some more anatomy. So today we're going to be talking about the brain. And so here is my question for you. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how interested are you in what your brain does? You know, I'll be honest with you guys. When I um, first... Um, it's just ironic when I took, you take anatomy and there's certain, certain parts of the anatomy learning that you really, really love. And some of it that you just could do without. And I felt like that about the nervous system. I really didn't care about the nervous system and the endocrine system and the heart. Those are really kind of ones that I wasn't really all that you know interested in. Well, my husband ended up with a brain tumor. So I ended up having to really learn a lot about that. And because I worked in ICU where we had a lot of head traumas. So I ended up having to really learn that part. I worked in cardiac surgery. So I had to learn a lot about that one. Several of my family members have endocrine diseases. So I've had to learn about that one. So I'll just tell you, um, even if it is something that you're not interested in, you know, anatomy, uh, things that we're going through, it is important for you to learn it because um, you never know where you're going to need that information. And as we go along, I will um, share kind of our um, story with you as to what we went through with my husband's uh, brain tumor and kind of the facts and, and the things that have happened because of it. All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to share my screen. You do have your notes. I've shared them in Canvas. So make sure that you are using those. Okay. All right. I love this picture right here. I just think um, it, it's just kind of, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a piece of artwork and um, I really like, um, this is just think, use your brain. Um, we all have one, but they, we all have different abilities. And if you um, were to lose your ability to do the things that you do, I think that you would, um, really kind of, really look back and think, I wish I had not taken for granted my education and those things, because there are people who can't, who can't learn, who can't do those things that you do. All right. So here we go. So the first thing we're going to look at is the meninges. The meninges are the um, tissue that lay between the bone or your skull and your um, brain okay so if you look here in this picture you see your skin okay the skin is the outer layer then we have what's called the periosteum peri means around and stem is tissue so it's a, a tissue that's around the outside of the skull and then we have the skull which is the bone and then we have three layers of the meninges the dura mater the arachnoid mater and the pia mater dura mater dura means tough and mater means mother. So that's the toughest. And, and literally when I've held a uh, duramater in my hands and I try to pull on it, you literally have to cut it with a knife because you cannot cut through it. Or you can't pull through it. Whereas with the arachnoid layer, it looks more like um, a spider web. That's why it's named the arachnid, arachnoid. It looks more spider webby. Okay. And it's much more delicate. And then the PM mater is the one on the inside that is very delicate and it lays straight on top of the brain. Okay, so if you look at the word meninges, one of the things that can kind of stick out to you is that it's contained in the word meningitis. So now you know where that's located. A meningitis would be inflammation, inflammation, itis means inflammation of the meninges. So these three layers end up being uh, inflamed. Okay, what causes that? It can be caused by a bacteria or a virus, okay? And there are several serious complications that you can get. And people, I have had patients who have died of meningitis. Uh, it can cause um, severe brain damage. It just depends. Typically, though, that we don't, you know, most of the time, if, you, if you've had meningitis or you know somebody who gets meningitis, don't flip out and think, oh my gosh, they're going to die. We just 
need to get them help when you get to them to the hospital. So meningitis, some of the symptoms are a headache, confusion or an altered mental status, phonophobia, phonophobia, it, it, the, they just can't, their ears are very, very sensitive. Photophobia means that their eyes are very sensitive to the light. They get a stiff neck, so they can't touch their chin to their chest. Um, high fever. Um, they can get a rash on their body. Now, it isn't just any rash. It's, a, what, it, it's called a petechiae rash. And it, what it is, it's actually broken blood vessels. So it's little tiny pinprick red spots. Okay. So, and you can't feel them. You, if you touch them, you can't feel them. And if you poke at them, they don't go white and then go red again. They just stay there because they're actually tiny bruises. Okay. So there is a vaccine for meningitis and anytime you find that they have started to, to create vaccines for something, you can almost guarantee that it's something that somebody could die from. Okay. We never, we, none of our vaccines um, have been uh, made for uh, illnesses that are not life that could, could, that they all have the chance to, uh, to be life threatening. Okay. All right, so that's the meningitis, the meningitis. So the next thing we're going to look at is something called cerebral spinal fluid, CSF. Now, if you know of anybody who's ever had a spinal tap or um, that kind of thing had done, that's what we are testing is the cerebral spinal fluid. This is the fluid that is ba bathed around the outside of your brain. If you see all of this purple around here is cerebral spinal fluid. You can see it inside the brain. You can see it around the brain and it goes down and goes around the um, spinal cord. It cushions the brain and acts as a shock absorber. Okay. It's a, it should be a clear liquid. If it's not a clear liquid, there might be something going on. Okay. People can get infections. And when you have meningitis, a lot of times the cerebral spinal fluid will show, um, it'll, it'll have um, an infection in it, in it as well. And as you'll notice, as we go on, we'll talk about different illnesses, just like we have in, in the other uh, uh, chapters that we've studied, okay? And this is one that um, we see quite frequently. This is called a subdural hematoma. Sub means under, dura, which is part of the um, meninges, okay? So this is a, a, brain, a traumatic brain injury, and one of the blood vessels on the outside of the brain has broken and bled into this area. And if you notice something that, you, that you're seeing here is that the brain has shifted to the left. Okay, over here on the right, this is the nose and stuff in the front. So we know that this is on the right hand side. And it's in a very common place for a subdermal hematoma because look right here, your skull is at its thinnest right in here. This is where the ear is at. So th this person's had some kind of traumatic injury. It's caused a subdermal hematoma that they'll have to go in there and take out, surgical remove, surgically remove so that the brain has its space back because this is causing a crushing injury to this brain. This can be life-threatening if it's left alone. All right, spinal cord. Your spinal cord goes down through the vertebral canal it's the hole in the you know how you have all of this um bone around the outside and then your spinal cord goes down the middle along with cerebral spinal fluid there are 31 segments okay each with a pair of spinal nerves so 31 segments between c1 and the, the cox coccygeal nerve down at the bottom there's 31 of them and they have 31 pairs of spinal nerves they're named for their location Okay, and you can see here that they're blue, green, yellow, and orange. The blue is up here in the in the neck. Okay, this is your cervical nerves. That's C1 through C8. Then thoracic is in the lung area. Okay, from the diaphragm up to the shoulders. And this is your thoracic area. And this is T1 through T11 or T12, I'm sorry, T12. And then we have our lumbar nerves. That's L1 through L5. And then we have the sacral 
coccygeal, coccygeal nerves. And uh, that's S1 S through S5 and the coccygeal nerves at the end. Okay. Now, um, if somebody were to have an injury to their spinal cord, um, we can tell, we can kind of estimate what kind of damage there'll be as to where the, the, the nerves were severed. I have a friend who fell off a house and he has a T, let's see, where is his, his was T, like T, um, maybe T5 through T8 were crushed. And so his injury is from T5 down. So he can move his arms. He can move his shoulders. He's got a little bit of diaphragm um, movement, but everything from there on down is not, does not move. Okay. Because of the injury he's had. So if I were to have a neck injury, T1 or T2, somewhere up there, I'd be completely paralyzed. If I had it down in the lumbar area, I would be paralyzed only in my legs. Okay. All right, the brain. The brain, when we first look at the brain, it is divided into three parts, three segments. Okay, it has more divisions, and we'll look at that, but we're going to start with this. You've got your cerebrum, which is the main part. It's the, it's the part that's got all of the little folds in it up here. Then we have our brain stem, which is back here, okay, back in this area. Actually, no, I'm sorry, that's the cerebrum. This king is losing her, her stuff here. Um, this is the cerebrum. I mean, if you notice the brain, the cerebrum and the cere the cerebrum, the top part and the cerebellum look very different. Okay. This has folds. Your cerebrum is all folded up. It's like it's an accordion. It's all squished. Like we're taking these pieces of paper and squishing them up. Okay. They take up less surface area that way. And we'll talk more about those little folds later. And then your cere cerebellum that is down here, looks completely different. And then your brainstem is this part right here. Okay, it goes inside. One thing I do want you guys to know is you will be doing a um, virtual um, dissection of, of a sheep's brain. You won't actually have the brain, but you'll be walking through what it would look like if you were there. So just prepare yourselves. We will be seeing some pictures like this. Um, it is it is important in anatomy to be able to do this. I know I had a really hard time when I went through anatomy, but it is important for you to be able to um, see the different parts and what it really does look like. And this is very similar to what a brain, what a human brain would look like. The cerebrum is that wrinkly part on the top, and you can notice that it ha it's a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. It's completely cut in two, okay? And this is the this is your higher mental function and problem solving. That all that takes place in this cerebrum, the large portion of your brain, okay? Then we have our cerebellum. This is our balance and coordination. And you notice there's gray matter on the outside and white matter on the inside. That white matter makes it look like there's trees, doesn't it? It appears like a tree. <clears throat> and this is what is called the arbor vitae, which means the um, tree of life. Okay. Now our brainstem. Now we're looking at the bottom part. And these are some cranial nerves that are coming off right here. Um, this part right here is your brainstem. Um, if it was turned right side up, it would dangle instead of being like kind of laying on top of the brain. You see your cere cerebellum back here and looks very different than your cere cerebrum, which is this part up here. So your brainstem regulates the visceral functions. These are the functions like breathing, um, heartbeat, uh, digesting food, all of those things that your <clears throat> that your body does automatically. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, now we're getting into the more um, in-depth part of looking at this. And you're going to see here, of course, we said this earlier. This is the skull. Meninges are on top of the brain. Then we have the cere cerebrum. This is a sulcus. This is a, a, a deeper groove. The corpus callosum is right here. And this is the one this, it, this we'll look at in just a little while. Diencephalon is right here, and the parts of the um, brain stem are your midbrain, your pons, and your medulla oblongata. 
And then down here, you have your cerebellum. <clears throat> Over here in the blue, you have your hypothalamus, which is right here, and your pituitary gland, which is attached to that. Okay, your hypothalamus is your master gland, and your pituitary gland um, is also very important as far as your, um, your hormones. And we'll look at those later when we look at endocrine. Okay, so your corpus callosum is the part that that attaches your left brain to your right brain, okay? Those are separated by the corpus callosum, okay? And so when we look at these pictures here, we've got one that is dissection. <clears throat> the first dissection is going this direction, okay? From le um, It's cutting this way so you're seeing the two these are the two hemispheres the left side and the right side and there's your ventricle and there's your corpus callosum okay so as you see this picture right here it shows you where it's dissecting from but then we're um, splitting um, <clears throat> the left from the right and that's your corpus callosum again okay so it goes it, it, you could see the whole thing on that side going from front to back this is the front up here this is the back down here Let's see, what is that? And again, there's your cerebellum, your cerebrum, and here is your um, brainstem. Okay, so we see there's all kinds of co convolutions in the brain. These are the wrinkles and grooves. Um, they're real important because you wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to fit your whole brain in there if we didn't have all these wrinkles and grooves. Um, when you get off to college, if you take anatomy, you may have to know quite a few of these. I know I did, but for our purposes, I just want you to know the difference. A fissure is a deep groove. This is a fissure right here. You see where you can practically see the left and the right side um, come apart right there. A sulcus is a shallow groove. That's these small ones over here. Okay, all these little small ones. And gyri are the bumps. Okay, they're the bumps that, that are created by the grooves. Okay, now you are not going to have to know all these. Okay, not going to ask you all of these. You may want to know them for your own learning. And that is absolutely fine. But just realizing that there's all kinds of sulci and uh, fissures in through here. All right, and these fissures and sulci actually divide the cerebrum into the different parts that tell us what the brain is going to do. Our frontal lobe is um, where we have executive function. That is the forehead area to about halfway back on the head, okay? So from about here to here, okay? And that's that blue part. And what that does is executive function. This is where you make your decisions. Um, what you're going to eat, um, where you're going to go, how you drive a car, those kinds of things, okay? That's your executive functions. And then the part that's at the crown of the head, the parietal area, that yellow area, that's for perception, sense-making, and math. That's where I see something happening, happening and I kind of decipher what I'm seeing, okay? That's where I do my math problems. The back part, <clears throat> occipital lobe, is back here at the base of the head, and that is for vision, okay? It sits on top of that cerebellum there. And then the green part is the temporal lobe, and there's two of them, isn't there? Left and a right, and this is memory and language. Now, are there other things that these, guys, these things do? Yeah, absolutely, but um, that's kind of the main things we're looking at. Here's our longitudinal fissure. It separates the left and the right. And then the transverse fissure separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. Okay. Um, I told you that we have ventricles, which are like openings or holes inside the brain tissue itself. This is where we make the cerebral spinal fluid and um, it transports it back and forth. So remember we saw the corpus callosum, which um, attaches the left and the right, okay? But then we have the lateral ventricle, which is the first and the second ventricle. Then we've got the third ventricle right here. This is the red one part. 
Okay. And then we have the cerebral aqueduct and the fourth ventricle, which is right in front of our cere cerebellum. Mr. King, he had his brain tumor right over this area right here. Okay. It grew right into here and just kind of spread out right there. It was a brain tumor that was only is created in an area that has cerebral spinal fluid. So it, he would never have had it up in these other areas of the brain, just where the cerebral spinal fluid is located. Okay, we have lots of different associated areas, okay? And so <coughs> in the frontal lobe area, we also have our motor cortex, okay? This is the frontal lobe. And this is our motor, motor um, area. This is our skeletal movement. The main frontal area up here is where we have coordination of information. Our taste and our smell are back here. The temporal lobe is auditory, it's hearing. Our vision is in our occipital lobe back here, okay? And then our sensory information from our skin and our muscles and our taste buds are right here in the parietal area, okay? And I have, Today. I'm going to share this little video with you. Just give me a second here to turn on the sound here. Meeting controls. Share sound. Okay, here we go. I love these. On these glasses awesome. that turn everything upside down and playing some games. Let's do that. Good mythical morning. If you paid a little bit of attention in biology class, you probably know how the eyeball works. It sees something, and then it the lens in your eyes actually flips it upside down, so your brain actually receives an upside down signal. In fact, the first couple of days that you're born, it is theorized, you actually see things upside down until your brain learns how to flip the images and you see right side up. That's really? an interesting phenomenon. So is reality inverted? No. And I just don't experience it that No, way? I don't think you understand. I think you've got an upside view of upside down view of what I just said. You see the image uh, upside down and then your brain flips it. Now, oh. uh, there's a man named George Stratton back in the 1890s. He invented a pair of glasses that actually turns the world upside down, much like the ones that we have gotten from the internet. But right these, also, these also flip it left and right, too. Uh, yes. So what ends up happening uh, with he, he wore these things for eight days, and after day five, his brain actually began to do the flipping back to right side up for him to show that his brain could take an upside down image and flip it upside down and then flip it upside down again. That's to pretty get it right amazing. Side up. So we're gonna try to figure out if we can do that. What he did in a, in like eight days in a matter of minutes. Uh, well, we're gonna see how well we can do with seeing the world upside down. I don't think our brains are gonna flip it in time. I put these on just for a little bit yesterday and embarrass myself quite a bit. Link has never put them on. Never put them on. I'm gonna put them on now with, with the thing up. And then we we have, oh my goodness. So they're up right now. Let me get my hair out of my eyes so I can see this thing. And I'm gonna attach this GoPro here to the top of my head. So you can see what Link is seeing, his uh, upside down. Hey, help me out with this. Actually, I don't this, think this flips this gonna left work? and right. I think it just That's flips it upside work. down. Oh, really? All right, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna throw, judge I'm gonna throw down on okay. these things. And now you might have to adjust those little the little bars to fit your eyes. Oh, where are you? Right like, here. I'm looking down to find you. Give me a high five, Link. <laughs> oh, hey, not, <laughs> not so hard, buddy. Give me, give, me a, give me a high ten. It's my field of vision is very narrow. <laughs> you look like a malfunctioning robot. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> The, more, the harder I try. Okay. All right. As it's you like, can see, my head won't go. Uh, we're not made to be to to work this way. So now let's play some games to exploit this even more. We're gonna play three different games, three different challenges, uh, increasing point levels in each round, and see who can see better upside down. Nope. Oh, this is me. You don't have to touch me. It's okay. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> round one: the writing challenge. So Link, all you gotta do is write your name. <laughs> oh, no. You hold it. 
Oh, you want me to hold it? You hold it, and then give me a pen, and I'm supposed to write. Okay, well, I thought you were going to put it on the table. Here's the pen. <laughs> here's, here's, there, there, there we this go. This is crazy, guys. Okay, now, this write is... your name. You've done this many times before. It's just L-I-N-K, okay? I know how to spell my name. Whoever writes their name better wins the round. <laughs> Are you joking with me? Right is there a time limit? Because don't start it yet. Uh, 15 seconds starting now. <laughs> That's an L. This is this is hard. Well, excellent job so far. I can't even find. Time's up. Okay, stop, stop, stop. That last little thing doesn't count. I'm going to erase what? it. What? What? You did it after the time. What? This is what you did. So can I flip her? I'm flipping Lena. up. Lena. Wow. You, <laughs> I misspelled my name. You wrote, no, there was going to be a K of it. Well, I, that was pretty I good. I erased that part. It was I actually pretty, pretty good. good. It, this is, I mean, talk about disorienting. Let's switch up. Pretty great. All right, here we go. Uh, it's your turn. <laughs> You're very cautious in grabbing that thing. It's not going to It's not gonna bite you. Hold on. Which side? Yeah, there okay. you go. All right. All right, so you're going to you're gonna I'm, write your I'm name. I'm getting sick almost immediately. How many fingers am I holding? Sick. None. You're holding a sign. <laughs> I'm holding up. Well, it's not a sign. It's a whiteboard. Okay, I'm gonna write my name. 15 seconds. 14. 13. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. It first is an R. <laughs> what? <laughs> How did you do this? I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Flip it up. Whoa. Flip it up. How did you? It's like you did some, some cryptic artist <laughs> How did signature. you write your name? So look what I wrote. B -t -b -t -b -d. To, to be determined. Your name is, is still up in the air. <laughs> okay. That round goes to length. <laughs> round two. The pouring challenge. Oh, no. uh, in this challenge, uh, I'm going to be trying to pour... You look like a superhero, by the way. Thanks, Link. Here to save the day. Actually, I'm just here to pour some liquids. Uh, I'm going to pour liquids into a bottle that Link is holding over a bucket. And The who, pouring challenge. Whoever gets more liquid in their bucket, uh, in their bottle, wins. Where's, so, I have no idea where to look to see anything. Here you go. Here's your orange liquid. Grab that. Grab it. <laughs> Get the orange liquid. That's such a difficult Okay. Time. And I then, am not playing this up at all. So we're going to see who can get more liquid <laughs> into a bottle you gotta in put 15 it? seconds. Okay. I'm going to put this here, so I'm going to do it in my lap, too. All right. Pour this. Start up higher. And go. Pour. <laughs> pour. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, I don't know, it's 9, not... Eight, seven, six, five, Ooh, that's four, pretty good. three, two, one. All right, so that's how much you got in. You did pretty good. That's pretty you good. You did a lot of calibration, and uh, let's switch it up. All right, Link, it's your turn. I'm putting uh, the big bucket in. Do I look like a superhero, too? Uh, well, that wouldn't be my first guess. Maybe somebody posing as one. Okay, uh, you can grab your, your, your bottle of sports drink. It's there in front of you. Nope, that's my bottle. It's there in front of you. Okay. Yeah, it's in front of you, in front of your thing. Yep. Oh, wow. Now, I'm going to give you 14 seconds to pour into your bottle, because that's what you gave me. <laughs> I'm going to give you three seconds to get set. One, two, what in the world? three, 14, 13, 12, <laughs> 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 6, I can't do it! <laughs> Uh, I know I'm missing it, but I can't help it. You got a little swig in there. You got a little backwash level. What? What happened? You, I know I missed everything. You put it over here, and you kept going, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> like, Instead wow. of getting it in the net, you would, whoa! I lost, listen, I'm, I'm not putting on. I just lost fair and square. Okay. I just got I got two points for that you, round. You really calibrated. You found the lip, and then you were like, glug, 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 yeah. glug. Yeah. Technique, brother. That, I mean, maybe right. I'll call that. Cheating. I'm up two to one. This round three is a, a, a three points. Whoever wins round three takes it home. <laughs> round three, the hurdle challenge. Oh no! Okay, since Rhett is leading two to one, he's going first in this final round, the hurdle round. We have three hurdles of increasing height. You have to clear these without knocking them off in a 20-second time limit. Whoever 
knocks off the least number of hurdles in twenty seconds wins three points for that round. So I'm giving myself a thumbs down in my it's, face. It's, it's anybody's game at this point. It's a thumbs down in, in my world. <laughs> Stevie, you're going to count down from 20, yeah. starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 20, 19, oh, yeah, be careful. 18, 17, oh, okay. 15, <laughs> you just knocked those two over. 15, <laughs> you're totally 14, failing. Hold on, where's the next one? 13, I'm not going to tell you. It's, 12, it's, you better start stepping high, 11, buddy. Step high. Oh, 10. step. Oh, you cleared. Oh, I got one. Okay, that's good. I got over one. You cleared one without touching it. These other two, you totally demolished. Oh, I hit the first one. You stepped over this one and then went back and stepped on that one. So I need to. I need to get over at least two in order to win this whole game. But I got over the big one. That's gotta count for something. <laughs> it counts for something. My turn. All right, now it's Link's turn. Link, all you got to do is get over two of these successfully, and you take home the prize. When I look down, my feet are facing me. Okay. Okay, you got 20 seconds to get over two, starting in three, two, one, go. 20, 20 19, 19, 18, 17. <laughs> <laughs> you did the same you thing. Lost. What, what you knocked over two, just see so if you can get over the last one, and, we, and I'll call it a tie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I've now spotted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've now spotted it. Well, you're, you're not anywhere close to it. No way. Interesting technical. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so there you go, guys. I think that's kind of interesting, just, you know, information as we look at um, what can happen. Um, and, yes, with our vision, the, the nerves in our eyes flip the images that we see and so they're actually going into our brain upside down and so what they were looking at um uh, is just you know looking at what does our brain actually see and um it interprets it and flips it back around for us so it's actually very interesting okay so there is our brainstem our brainstem is attached to the thalamus and then the hypothalamus and then the pituitary is right here. So you've got the diencephalon, which is the thalamus and the hypothalamus, which are right here. And then the pituitary gland, which is there. And then we've got our three parts of the brain stem, the midbrain, the pons, and the all medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata. Okay. Our di a di diencephalon, which I just talked about, has two parts, the hypothalamus. Um, which is our hormones, heart rate, blood pressure, body temperature, hunger, and it, it's attached to the pituitary, which is red in our picture here. Okay, and that's um, the thalamus is the relay station. So hypothalamus and the thalamus. Okay, now there is this, this shows us what's called the optic track or chiasma. These are your eyes right here, and this ha the these um, nerves they cross over, okay. So your left eye, um, it crosses over to the right side of the brain, and the right eye to the left. And the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, and I think we are um, probably most of you guys knew that. Um, so if, if you um, uh, are if you're um, you're moving the le the left hand, it's being controlled by the right, and, and vice versa. Some people who have um, some brain damage, in fact, Janessa, my daughter, was like this, that when she held an object, let's say I was holding this object here, and if I told her to put it in her other hand, but I she, I wouldn't let her other hand go over, because what she would do is she'd want to move her hand over and pick it up here, or go like this. But when she she that I mean you, that's how you or I would do it I should say that's how you or I would do it right she couldn't do that she stops right here okay so her left arm would not come over to to the right side and the right arm um, left arm wouldn't come to the right so um you know it, so our bodies are very interesting in how the way the they would way that they work okay our midbrain is the visual of reflexes and the eye movement our pons is our relay sensory information and the medulla is our heart rate, blood pressure, and those kinds of things that we have to have to survive. Okay. 
All right, our pituitary gland. This is our master gland. If you see the itty bitty little gland right here, okay? And it controls all of our hormones, the master gland. And the hypothalamus feeds the pituitary gland. And you may notice the pituitary gland has two parts, the front and the back. We'll talk more about those later. Okay, so thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, corpus callosum, medulla oblongata, the pons, and the membrane. Okay. And this is our last one. Let me take a look. Nope, we have just a couple more. The hippocampus. Hippocampus. This is otherwise known as the seahorse because it's kind of shaped that way. Apparently, they seem to think. I don't know. The hippocampus store is where we store and retrieve our memories. And we'll talk more about memories and how we store uh, short-term versus long-term memory and those kinds of things um, along the way, too. The amygdala is a storage of memories associated with emotions, also associated with fear response and aggression. This is where if you have an injury to this, this could be off for somebody where they would have fear or aggression when they shouldn't have and can cause all kinds of problems. Okay, so here we go. There's our, our, th our thalamus is right here. Hippocampus is the blue part. And the amygdala are these parts right here. All right, so our limbic system, which we've already talked about um, in this other, in this last part right here, the, the, the limbic system is the hypothalamus, the hippocampus, and the amygdala. So it's all of this stuff right here, okay, that we saw in here, it has a role in, the, in, in emotions. And there is an article that's attached here. And if you are interested in learning more about uh, the limbic system and um, what happens um, with the limbic system in teenagers, um, just let me know and I will send you this article. But it talks in here about risky behaviors and that, you know, since our, our um, the connections are still being made in our brains that our um, that our um, that risky behaviors by teens, teens can be explained in part as to how their brains are changing. Okay. All right, guys. Well, listen, let me come back here. If anybody has any questions about your assignments for this week, please make sure to let me know. I'm here and um, I hope you guys have a great week.